And you nailed it. That's like one of my favorite um, kind of frameworks. I know you're a big framework guy, so am I, right? Most people, what do they do? They take their active income and they use that to pay their expenses, right? Their living expenses and whatever's left over if any, right? Most of the time it's not for most, most people, then they'll maybe invest that. Well, instead, in what you just said, you take your active income, you invest it in assets that produce cash flow, and your cash flow then covers your expenses. Everybody. Welcome out to the D2D podcast. And I am here with Brody Fawcett. He is a eight year veteran in the D2D space. And now he's gone and created what we call the real estate investing school. So I love finding people in this industry that have made multiple six figures in door to door by the age of 25, get all of his expenses paid because he wasn't blowing it on dumb boats and, and yachts and all the fun stuff. He was taking his door to door money, putting it into real estate and you know that residual income and to where now he's making over six figures a year just in passive income and he's now created a school he was a vendor at ddd con and you know really helps um young door-to-door guys or old or whatever um put their money in smarter places and teaching them how to step by step go from getting a loan to finding property etc uh, just because it's a huge problem in our space so i'm a firm believer in what Brody's doing, so hit him up uh, and uh, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, dude. Uh, pumped to do this. You're coming off of a, a big high this last weekend. That was incredible. Yeah, it's, it's Monday. So if you're listening to this, it is today is Monday, the day after Door Door Con, or two days after Door Door Con. Yesterday, I felt like I was still on like a, where am I? Today, I still don't have my voice. <laughs> I felt so guilty for like sleeping in this morning. I was like, Oh man, I should be at the gym right now. I should, and I just like rolled over and kept sleeping. <laughs> and Dude, was, that, that was unreal. Uh, yeah, I mean, you deserve a few a few sleeping days for sure. I think that for everyone that wasn't there, I know a lot of people listening were there in person, so they can definitely attest to it. But incredible, like it, it's cool. I was talking to somebody there. They were just saying that. Yeah, I remember. I don't know how many years ago this was. You know. Uh, whatever, eight, nine, 10 years ago, whatever. But they were just saying, I remember when Sam first brought this idea up, we were driving in the car and he's like, Hey, I want to do something like this. And, and, uh, now you look at it, where it went from that idea stage to just how, I mean, this was DDD con five, right. But just how incredible it was from the speakers to the people showing up, like absolutely blown away. I've always sent reps there in the past, but I haven't personally been until this year. Um, but yeah, huge. I, I think like aside from, you know, the event itself and, and everything that people are going to get out of it and who it impacted, what I've been impressed with is just that it went from this idea that honestly, most people didn't think was possible. And you look at where it is now, and that just says a ton about you. And I think that's, that's also like where the remarkable story is not just at the event itself, but like actually building it. It's awesome. Thanks, man. It means a lot means a lot like honestly even i won't say some names but there are some people there this year that have never been and i recognize that some of them and they've been some naysayers and some haters and it's like hey guys just freaking join the club like it's we're helping everybody and and there was an individual that just didn't show up that i was supposed to recognize and you know, it hurts like it's like one of those things you're like dude all i'm doing is trying to put you on a big stage and a big platform and and watching some people still be like no i don't i don't believe in that i don't i don't want to help the industry i don't want to give i'm like dude this industry is like where you've made up your whole life you helped millions of people helped tons of sales reps like i'm just like why wouldn't you come celebrate it, it you know together instead of like me versus you i win you lose like why can't we be in a win-win space and i still after five years had people no show that i literally was like dude this is for you man like the world needs to like celebrate you. And I got to the point where I'm just like, I'm done playing that game. I'm done trying to kiss some people's feet. Like, if you can't see it now, like, sorry, it's supposed to suck. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll, I don't know. Well, it's, it's a classic like underdog story, you know? And that's what I love. Cause I think that a lot of people see you now where you are now 
they see the event now, right? Like me, I come to the event. It's easy to, to get in this, this viewpoint of like, oh yeah, well, well, of course Sam can create it. He's got all these relationships or of course he can do it. You know, he sold over 400 accounts and was the top rep at, at Vivin or, or whatever, right? Um, and I, I think that like, what's cool is like, to realize how much work that went into it. And, and it's, it's hope for like guys like me, right. And other people that have big ambitions to be like, yeah, I'm starting somewhere and there's going to be a lot of hardship along the way. There's going to be times I get, you know, my face kicked in, but like just seeing what you've built is motivation. It should be at least for people that are listening that have these big goals and these dreams to go, to go build something. Cause that's exactly what you did is intentionally build it. And it wasn't on accident either. Right. It was something you intentionally built, which is so inspiring. When, and let's 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 talk about you now like i mean obviously like we before this call so if you're listening like we we're just jamming about how it was really hard to like walk away and have like a new identity you know you stepped away from eight years in door to door and you know for you to go now start this new venture where you had a secure income and you knew you were good at it and you were famous you know what i mean like and to say, I've got a vision to create this real estate investing school and like make this sweet office that looks like you're in a sauna and like, <laughs> and like you know what I mean? Like have like, just like, you know, you're, you know, if I turn the camera around, you're probably like in your underwear and you're probably got your in the back. Like, you're like, well, at least what on camera, like this looks cool. I remember starting my first videos in my basement kitchen and like there was an echo and I had a white piece of paper taped to the wall and I'm like, Nobody sees the other part of where I'm at. Like I got dirty dishes sitting in there, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, um, but it's like, it's just interesting because people didn't see that grind of me just putting videos out in my basement kitchen. And now you're like, oh, cool. I'm on speaking on stage with Eric Thomas and Jesse Itzler and, you know, and this cool thing. So I, for anybody listening to this, there's hope like for you, like how long ago did you start this whole real, base, real estate investing school? Yeah. So, um, Great question. First off, it's funny you bring up like my office, right? Cause I'm a big environment guy and I just feel like there's, there's power in being in the right environment. Right. And so we, uh, anyhow, we built this detached office. So it's, I'm in my backyard right now. It's this little, like, yeah, I, I don't know how, how big it is, but, uh, my wife has half of it. So she's on the other half. So we work together. We're, we're like, you know, just, uh, entrepreneurs at heart, but well, I called the city on my new house I just built. Uh -huh. I tried to, I was like, dude, I got a whole acre and unfortunately it's all mountain. So I was like, can I just build into the mountain? And uh, they're like, no, you can't build above this line. Cause I'm like the highest house on the hill in Salt Lake Valley. You know what I mean? They're like, you can't go up higher. It's like, and I was like, no, cause I wanted to build something like you said, like a dope, yeah. like studio, like set up anyway. Totally. Well, it's cool because uh, so we built this like six months ago, right? We were building, and of course, like me, I mean, I I scrapped the whole thing together. Normally, maybe it costs like twenty grand, and I did it for you know, like I don't know, forty five hundred bucks because you hire the right people and and kind of whatever. But um, it was cool because when we were building it, I told my wife I was like, you know what, we're gonna make a million bucks out of this office before the end of the year. And uh, for me, like I'm, I'd never done that before, right? Um, I was a Vivint for yeah, seven and a half, eight years. Um, never, never did that. So really had no idea how that was gonna happen or what I was gonna do. And you, you ask how long has real estate investing school been around? Like uh, it's super recent, right? Like I didn't, I didn't know of it at the time. I knew I wanted to do something with it because I had kind of coached investors for uh, the last five or six years. I came out with a course about a year ago, um, which went pretty well. I, I'd sell that online of how to get um, started in real estate, but really had no idea how I was going to go and do that. And it was cool because, uh, yeah, like, yeah, we crushed it, like crushed our goal past that seven figure mark um, as we were coming up on the, the beginning of the year. And yeah, it just feels good, right? To like be that person, especially, and you know, we're jamming on it, but like stepping away from, from door to door, which always will have a special place in my heart. And I, you know, I'm so grateful for it for, I wouldn't be where I am today without that. But it also feels good to be like, hey, guess what? Like I stepped away, you know, not knowing 100% how I was going to go, you know, make a million bucks or whatever. Um, and then just going and making that happen, like also feels good, right? That's awesome. Proud of you. Props, man. Take Thanks. some courage. Take some courage to throw. And, and okay, here's the thing. If you're door to door, obviously you're probably listening to this. And here's my invitation is when you realize you can spend eight years knocking doors and get your face kicked in, 
that's when you realize you could do probably anything. Like whether that's throw an event like I did, where I'm literally knocking on businesses' doors, being like, bring your team. And they're like, F no, they're all gonna get recruited. <laughs> or like, or like I'm knocking on vendors' doors and I'm like, hey, you should come. Like I was at this, I was at Silicon Slopes and I'm like going to all the vendors, literally like, hey, you should come to our event. Hey, you should come to our event. <laughs> And now they're like, what's that? Door to door con. I'm at Silicon Slopes. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, and I'm just like, I'm out there beating the, beating the streets just like anyone else. And, but I'm not afraid to go talk to a stranger, not afraid to go put my ass on the line, not afraid to go get scrappy and spend, instead of spending the 20,000, you spent the 4,500 and negotiated your way down. You know what I mean? Like, those are skill sets you've learned over the last 10 years just doing the scrappy DDD work. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's funny because, like, uh, so last month with like launching the school, which obviously we'll, we'll dive into, I'm sure, but like um, easiest thing in the world to sell for me, because I I mean, I believe in it, there's so much value in it, right? When value exceeds price, a transaction occurs. And so it's been really easy to sell, but it's cool going from like, yeah, you develop this skill set to uh, of, of basically just learning how to sell and overcome objections. And you, you don't even really realize it, but uh, it was cool going from that to like, I've never sold anything on Zoom or over the phone, but I opened up my calendar, you know, for a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, it's just cool, like going from, hey, I've been used to just cold calling, knocking on doors, right? And how, just how that correlates to life, but then also to like this this new business venture that I have. And um, for anything you do the rest of your life, like it, it starts now. So like people that are, you know, rookies or just getting started or whatever, first year managers or, or crushing it now, like those, the skill set that you're learning, it's so transferable. Um, but like times, times ten, times a hundred in the future, if you can learn the principles and the basics, you you basically just trade that up for like a higher commission ticket. Yeah. So let's talk about real estate. Like, you know, I guess the number one problem I see in this industry is guy goes make hundred grand, doesn't know what to do with his money because he only needs thirty grand to live or he goes and makes 500 grand or whatever that is. And I see people blowing all their money. So how do you help, if I have sales reps or I am a sales rep, how do you help shift this paradigm of, hey, do what I do what you and I did. I, I, I lived in my basement on my first home. It's funny, me and my girlfriend got on a fight yesterday because I Airbnb'd my, I Airbnb my house. And I, I slept in like this ghetto bedroom yesterday night. I literally haven't even been back to my own home after a freaking long weekend. It's getting cleaned right now because I make seven grand a month on my home that I don't live in when I'm out traveling, like at the DDD con or this weekend, I'm at SRC Summit speaking in Dallas. And then next weekend I'm going to Mexico, but I'm in Mexico. I'm making 900 bucks a night in my house. And, no. and so like, I always have had this weird mindset of like, get the asset to pay for the liability. And you obviously did too, cause you had your expenses paid by 25. So how do you guys to start thinking this way? What, what, how do you change maybe their background or their mentality? Like, did you grow up thinking this way? Like, was your dad this way? Like, where did that come from? No, that's good stuff. And I, I think, yeah, I think starting at the beginning really helps. Right. Cause for me, like I, when I look back at like all the jobs that I've had, right? And especially leading to D to D, like I was always chasing like a hard today for an easier tomorrow, right? Um, and, and I love that concept. And so like, I remember um, I worked construction for my grandpa and it was the first time where like there was so much work to do and he was still paying me hourly, right? But he said like, as many hours as you work, I'm not paying you for lunch, right? So if you wanna have a quick lunch or a long run, it's up to you, but as many hours as you can work in a day, like I'm gonna pay you for those hours. And so for me, that was the first glimpse of like, holy smokes, I can trade a hard today for an easier tomorrow, right? And so for me, like it was that 12 hours, right? Not including lunch and then he's paying me 12 bucks an hour at the time, right? And so I was like, sweet, if I can go, you know, I felt in control of my future and then that correlated, I think like um, all through high school, I had a job at a car wash, right? And I didn't start washing the cars. That was like, you gotta work up to that. Um, I started pumping gas and it was just like complimentary gas. So they have attendance. So people would pull up to the, the pump. This is Fabulous Freddy's. And uh, you're supposed to ask him, hey, do you want me to pump your gas for you? Most people say no, right? It's like, no, I'll, I'll pump my own gas. And so a lot of my coworkers, they would just sit there and wait and watch why people pump their own gas. And so. 
for me, what I figured out was if someone said no, I said, no problem. Like, let me, let me just wash your windows for you while we're waiting here. And so I'd pull out the squeegee and I just scrub their windows, you know, you got bugs and stuff on there. And, uh, whatever the reason, I don't know if they felt guilty or felt like they had to, but they would always tip me. Right. And so for me, I'm like, dude, all I have to do is wash a window. I'm getting tipped plus I'm getting paid hourly. And so point being like, I was in control of the money I was making it. I was able to build more freedom. I could work a little bit harder and get paid a little bit more. And so ultimately when the opportunity to, to go do sales came along, I'm like, okay, wait, so you're telling me like the harder I work, the more I get paid. And it just was relating to this whole concept of like, I can work hard today for an easier tomorrow and build more freedom in my life. And so for me, I've always been chasing like this freedom, right? And I think uh, it's interesting. So uh, just this weekend, right? I was talking to a bunch of um, um, door-to-door um, reps and I asked them like, how many people do you know that say, hey, this is my last summer and then they come back again the next summer. Great, great. And then they say it again and they come back again, right? And uh, for me, this was my biggest fear in getting into the industry because I look around and I, I saw even even year one, that was all my biggest fear. I didn't want to do the job. And whenever my career ended, you know, I had no idea at the time how long it was going to be. Definitely didn't think it was going to be eight years. Um, but the, the common denominator was like, I do not want to be that person, however many years I do the job, that when I'm done, all I have to show for it is like a nice truck or something, right? And that's it. And uh, so, so I asked him, I was like, why do you think it is that these reps that say, hey, this is my last year, come back again. And they say, hey, this is my last year and they come back again. And uh, one, of, one of the reps responded uh, because of the freedom. And I was like, okay, I feel you there, right? Like the job gives you freedom because you can go grind for a summer and then you have the rest of the year off, right? So to speak. Um, but I said, I'm like, is it really freedom if he's coming back year after year when he doesn't want to and he required to be in a place he doesn't want to be doing something he doesn't really want to do and being around people he doesn't really want to be around because to me like that's the opposite of freedom the exact opposite and so i think uh i think for me like i've always been chasing like this more freedom and fulfillment and so you go from door to door, you're trying to replace that. And that's extremely difficult, you know, extremely difficult. We're used to making thousand plus dollars a day consistently, right? Cause you learn how to sell something. And then you go from, from that to try and go get a job somewhere. Like no one's going to really hire you for that. Right. For the most part. And so for me, real estate was that next step in that whole process of like all these mini careers that I've had, because to me, it's been the ultimate form of freedom. I can go to bed and I can wake up in the morning and my bank account grows despite me clocking in, despite me knocking on the door, despite me like working. Right. And so um, that's why I've been passionate about this knock doors to own doors stuff was because yes, like you have to grind it out and, and go hustle. That's what you're doing now, but do don't, don't do it with, without the end in mind, right? Like do it to build more freedom because you take your money and, and you nailed it. That's like one of my favorite, um, kind of frameworks. I know you're a big framework guy. So am I, right? Most people, what do they do? They take their active income and they use that to pay their expenses, right? Their living expenses and whatever's left over, if any, right? Most of the time it's not for most, most people, then they'll maybe invest that. Well, instead, and what you just said, you take your active income, you invest it in assets that produce cash flow, and your cash flow then covers your expenses. So now, as you go to grind every day, like you're going out with a purpose, not just like, Hey, I'm going to get a big check and like, I don't know, but buy a vehicle or live, live large. No, you're doing it to build freedom for the rest of your life because you're grinding now. And so that's ultimately what led me to real estate, um, from door to door. Love that. Um, and if anybody's listening to this, I did the same thing you know, <laughs> would have done the same thing. And yeah, it gets tempting when, here's the problem, <clears throat> is when an environment that you're in is asking for the opposite. Meaning, all of my teammates are buying Teslas, therefore I need to buy Tesla. Or meaning, we're all going on this dope epic trip spending 10 grand this month, I need to do and be on that trip. So we, I think FOMO might be one of the almost elements of this environment where you watch these sales reps get into this 
oh, look what he's doing on Instagram. Look what they're doing. Look what he has. And instead of saying, you know, I don't, it's funny. Like, I don't talk about my real estate a ton. Like, I'm just like, cool. I put a video out the other day for the very, very first time. Like, I was like, cool, I'm going to make a video about how I made, you know, a lot of money in real estate over the last couple of months. And, uh, but just like, you know, how do we create more FOMO? And that's why I like your real estate investing school. It's like, how do we create real, real FOMO around like the cool kids? They're the ones doing the real estate stuff. Yeah. Cool kids, they're the ones that have passive income and collecting checks every month. Like this weekend where I made 5,500 bucks this weekend, renting out my house when I wasn't there. Like that's like, I don't know. For me, that's where um, it would be smart to create I don't know, we just need to create more hype around this. So I'm glad that you're advocating this. So what's the mission here? Where do you, where do you want to go with this? Where's the long term? Yeah, no. So, I mean, I think like there's a lot of things out there that, that say, hey, like, give me your money and, and I'll fish for you, right? Just give me your money, give me your money. And it's, it's the easy route. Like, cool. Like a lot of people want to take your money, right? The purpose of real estate investing school is like, we don't want to fish for you. We want to teach you how to fish you can fish as many times as you want again and again and again and again right um there's so many strategies within real estate investing and, and you know this right that like and there's so much content yeah yeah podcasts you have youtube channels you have it, there's so much out there that it almost becomes analysis paralysis for guys and and they just don't end up investing right i literally this morning wrote down i'm in that spot like i was like i have a lot of money I just did a huge, I just sold off an apartment complex. So like, I'm like, oh, I got options here. And I sat down and I was like, do I want to do Airbnbs? Do I want to do here in Utah? Do I want to do out of Utah? Do I want to multifamily? Do I want to commercial? Do I want to do, you know, syndications? Do I want to big, little? Do I want to go find just like single family? Like, I was like, ah! <laughs> was like, yep. yep. And, that, and that's totally normal, man. Like now imagine somebody who doesn't, who doesn't have any experience with real estate and knows they need to get into it or they should, but doesn't even know where to start. Right. Um, you at least have experience to where you're, you're not going to like mess up. Um, what we try and do and the focus this is what's cool is like, um, and I, I can explain the platform, but ultimately it's, it's a coaching program. Um, so you have not just the education where it's like, Hey, here's all this stuff you could do. Go this way, go that way, go that way. Um, you have the education, which is top notch. But then you have the accountability, right? From working with a one-on-one -on -one coach and the, and the idea there, and this is what, what makes it stand out. And this is why there's nothing that exists out there, period, like it is. We look at like each individual and it's a personalized approach. So instead of this generic, like, hey, do like, cause everyone wants you to do this, right? You have to do Airbnb or do Airbnb arbitrage or long-term rentals or commercial or multifamily. This is where it's at. And the reality is they all work but they don't all work for you, right? And so the reason being is because nobody's taking the time to get to know like the individual to the point where like, hey, you have certain resources, right? That are unique to you. You have certain skill sets that are unique to do, to you, right? And then on top of all of those things, like we also wanna look at where you wanna go because everybody wants to go somewhere different, right? They have a different goal and so, Basically what we do is we take this 10,000 foot view approach and we look at like the individual and be like, Hey, cool. This is where you're at. These are all the things you have to work with. Right. Which, I mean, we go in depth on that, like even your connections and relationships and other people and credit, all these things. Right. And then we ultimately look at like, Hey, what do you really, really want? And it's usually like a three to five year goal. And then we dial that back to a one year goal. That's going to put you on pace to hit that three to five year goal. And then our job, because the, the school and the way it works, like it's a year commitment, right? Everybody involved in the school, it's not, it's not a five week boot camp. It's not a course. It's not, it's, Hey, we're focused for minimum one year because we're getting results and we're moving the needle. Like we're making something happen. And so we zoom back in and just focus on that strategy to get you where you want to go. I love that. I watched this video this morning about how most online courses have a 6% completion rate. Sure. that's just finishing the videos yeah and so let alone you you spew a bunch of information on me what ensures that i'm like why am i buying this so that i get x outcome well and what's interesting is most people with an investment opportunity they get really afraid to say i don't want to mess up so then they don't do it so i like your approach because a year is ample time to say cool if our if our objective is to take the 100 grand that you have and deploy it into, let's say a fourplex, 
it gives me time to find a deal, finance a deal, um, renovate the deal even if you wanted to do some renovations. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I like that approach because you could get like, that's the thing, so many people, because there's so many options, think they have to be doing them all, but it's like, I know some people that own a thousand Airbnb arbitrage things and you're just like, wow, like they just niched in and they're printing money. Or I know some people that are just commercial or just strip mall or just residential and just flips. Like that's the thing. Like, um, I think, I think people think they have to be like touching everything, but I actually think that more people are successful just by saying, damn, I'm, I flip like 20 homes a month or, and they just got so good at that. And then there's printing money. Yeah. So, a lot of people has it like, oh, I can't do real estate yet because like I'm so I'm focused on door to door. Or I have this company or I'm all in here. Like, guess what, dude? I that what do you think I've done the last eight years? You know, like I know that better than anybody. I've been in the grind. Like I've been running teams. I've been like, and and I still did it right. And so it doesn't take that much extra effort. It's just a small like intentional adjustment to what you're doing and why you're doing it on the real estate side and the passive income side. And it'll change your life forever. No, I think here's what's interesting. Um, yeah, I think there's a misconception of like, I don't have time. And and I, I, I don't know if you would agree with this, but it's like, as long as you have the right team or like people kind of doing some of the, I don't know, just some of that work with you. And then you spend maybe a couple of hours a week, maybe one or two a week, like, I mean, if I spend more than two hours a week on real estate, like I'm like, wow, what a, like, wow, this is getting overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the cool thing about a team too, and, and we talk about this, we go in depth with this is like, it doesn't cost you any money, right? For example, how does, how does a real estate agent get paid? They're right. Paid. When the deal happens and, and who pays them? Like <laughs> the sellers pay them. Right. Uh, same with the lender. How does a lender get paid? Right. Like, they get paid when the transaction happens. Like how's the title guy get paid? Right? So all these things, even wholesalers, like how does a wholesaler get paid? Well, they get paid when the deal goes through. Right. And, and it's a win-win scenario. That's how they get paid. So as you start to develop all these relationships and you deploy these people to actually work for you, right? A real realtor, a wholesaler, like they're incentivized to bring you deals and you don't have to pay them to do it. Like it's, it's amazing. You just have to get them to work and tell them what you want. And they'll go work those, you know, five, six, seven, eight hours for you in a week when you're doing the, like you said, you know, one to two hours a week. Love that. Love that. Um, so let's say, let's just like run through a scenario. Um, I knocked doors a couple of years, got some money put away. You know, a lot of people right now are running through, well, the market's so high, right? That's the first objection everybody's probably saying in real estate i guess what what is your sense what's your pulse on the market in your opinion i always i always try to ask this question like where, where do you feel like it's at yeah yeah i love it um it's probably not gonna be the answer that you're looking for um but uh my answer is always the same because the the problem right now and this is why it's you know quote unquote competitive or you have higher prices or people are struggling to to find a good deal right it's because that's exactly what they're doing is finding a good deal or looking for a good deal, right? You're doing the exact same thing that everybody else is doing and you're looking in the exact same places that everybody else is looking. So by default, you're gonna get the results that everybody else is getting, which is a high market, can't make the numbers work, like it's, it's it doesn't make sense to invest right now. Um, and so what we really dive into and teach people how to do um, one, look places that people aren't looking, right? And you'll get different results. And then two, and this is the big one, is you can't just look to find a deal. You got to create a deal. And so I can give you so many examples, uh, but like the last couple of months, like the, the biggest deals that I've done in my entire investing career have happened in the last couple of months. And that's because they've all been deals that, that I've created and used creativity on versus just, oh, this is on the MLS or, oh, this popped up on Zillow. I'm going to buy it. Right. Yeah. I literally knocked my neighbor's door yesterday, made him an offer. <laughs> Dude, I love it. He goes, he goes, 
Well, because this is why we're the fight, right? So I was like, well, I don't have a place to sleep tonight because it's still getting Airbnb. And <laughs> I had moved into this place and he'd come over to say, what's up? He's like, yeah, I might sell my home in like, I don't know, six months, a year or something. I, I've been here a long time. And I was like, keep me in the loop. <laughs> so, yeah. so then I was like, well, maybe I go buy this sooner and see if I can get him out of there. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I do that last week, right? Um, and, you, and you do it for, I mean, this was like our, our dream home. It's actually a long story, but um yeah long story we we were in the highest and best with this house and uh lost it and ended up getting a house around the corner but like drive past that house you know multiple times a week and every time i see it, i'm just like gosh and so um this is the second time knocking on his door you know in the last year but knocked on his door and was like hey dude um you ready to sell this or what you know i, I think that i mean talking about you know knocking doors and having that skill set and getting rid of that fear like that's that's going to go such a long ways that's a different type of niche and i and i'm talking about even outside of knock like that's super creative right you don't have people that are going to do that and there's a lot of ways to look at houses that you know they're, they're going to give you a higher chance that they're willing to sell it a lot of times like if the yards aren't taken care of super well right or you might know the zoning for that property um and it's not being used for that it just has a small house on it like those are things to to kind of go after or knock on those doors um, and make the deal work that way too. For sure. Um, okay. So what's your number one place you tell people to start? I don't have any, any property, um, yet. Where do you put, where do you tell people to start? Like to do their first deal? Do you have kind of a recommendation or are you unopinionated on that? Yeah, no, definitely have a recommendation. Um, so I, I've created like this thing I call it the six figure passive game plan. Um, if anybody wants, I, I think it's linked right now. You can, you can download it for free. I think it's just brodyfaucet.com if anyone wants to download it. Um, but it just goes through like my six steps. Cause for me, like I took 6,000 bucks, right? That's how I bought my first house. Um, and which is, I bought that from house hacking, which is one of the answers I would give you, right? For me, I was single at times. So I lived in one of the bedrooms. I rented out the other rooms. Um, it's called house hacking because you can kind of hack the mortgage payment or you get other people to, to pay for it, right? Um, but uh, but for me, I took that six grand. If I, I traced that house back and this was, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, I bought that first house. I've made um, over a million dollars from that house, which like sounds insane. And people are like, oh, I don't believe that, I don't do that. Dude, well, one, I still have the house, right? The mortgage is, um, uh, 1100 bucks, a thousand eighty dollars worth of mortgages, and it rents out for twenty eight hundred dollars a month right now. Um, but it's it's cash flowed, you know, fifteen hundred bucks the whole time I've had it. But then what I've been able to do is because it appreciated, I did a cash out refinance, I pulled money out of it, I invested that into two other properties that each cash flowed really well, also, right? So I'm collecting the cash flow, and then I end up selling one of those properties made over a hundred grand, rolled that into a bigger deal that cash flows even more. And so I can trace this one property back from my six grand that I put down on it, right? Um, to over a million bucks cash that I've been paid, you know, over the last eight and a half years. And so, I mean, that's like the power of real estate, but um, so yeah, just getting into something that the benefit of owner occupying a property, this is why I tell people you need to buy with it, with the intent of this is going to be a good investment, right? A logical decision versus buying with the intent of emotional, this is a place I want to live in, right? And so if you can be willing to sacrifice a little bit, right? Sacrifice future years of your life, um, living like nobody else will, what you did, the duplex did the same thing for me. You know, I was single living in one of the bedrooms, running out the other rooms. I got married. We wanted so bad to kick all the tenants out and live in this, you know, five bedroom house with a yard and everything. Like we wanted that more than anything, right? We're newlyweds. I own this house and we ended up renting this crappy basement apartment um, for a couple months until we bought a duplex and did the exact same thing, right? What you did, lived upstairs, rented out the basement. And so, um, yeah, just being willing to owner occupy something, the power of that is you can get into it with a lower down payment and the whole way to get a good return, right? Is little money in, a lot of money out the, the least amount of money you put into something and the most amount you get out by default equals a higher return 
And so we dive into these strategies like seller financing or owner occupying, you know, you can do what I did when I was single, or you can get a duplex or a triplex. You go up to a four unit where they'll let you owner occupy it and put a lower down pivot in. Love that. Love that. Um, so where, where we got to kind of wrap up, but like where, where could somebody find you if they were like interested in learning about this real estate investing school or just maybe getting a coaching call with you or what that looks like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, for me, time is like the number one thing I value the most, right? Um, but what I did do, and I think this is still this is still good because we're just coming off door door com. But if someone wants to go to knockdoorstoowndoors.com, just knockdoorstoowndoors.com, um, they can. I opened up not this. Well, I, I don't know when this airs, but I have some time opened up in my schedule to where they can book a, a free 20 minute strategy call with me. And they don't have to have any experience. They don't have to have a ton of cash. Like I would say like in our school right now, probably 40% of the people have never done a deal. Um, some of them have, you know, five, 600 K in their bank account ready to go. Um, others of them have less than 5,000 bucks. Right. And so that's, what's so cool about personalizing it um, to them. But, but yeah, ultimately you can do that. Or if you just want more information on the school and what it entails as well, you can also go to knockdoors to owndoors.com and, and there's like a PDF on there that'll tell them about it. And then of course, Instagram, um, which is just at real estate investing school or, or my personal account, which is just Brody Fawcett. Awesome. Dude, Brody, this has been a wealth of knowledge, even on the <laughs> podcast and you know, my, my call to action to everybody listening to this is to have a lion's share of your portfolio net worth in real estate. Um, I think that it is the smarter, I think a lot of people have been kind of this FOMO of cryptocurrency. And, and I think there's been a lot of people that are like, oh, I just have all these NFTs and all this and this and this. And I'm like, guys, overnight that could disappear. Stock overnight could disappear. House have burned down to disappear. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that'd be an earthquake to disappear. Like it's a physical thing. You see it, touch it and 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 can value it. and. So I think that, um, I think my my sense, um, working with some really, really high network people, you know, you're just like the common denominator is a lot of them in real estate, a lot of it. And uh, so it's, it's never too late to start. Even if we think we're in a high market, they're still buying smart deals in a high market that you don't lose your shorts on. Even if the market does correct a little bit, who cares? Like you you're, you're, you need to hedge for that strategy because cool part about, if the market corrects a little bit, stock market sucks. It's like, darn it, stock, you know, like whatever. If we hedge, somebody always will need a roof over their head. Like it's just part of part of being alive is needing shelter. So real estate's gonna always be there. So um, guys, hit up Brody, good friend of mine, he's a good dude. And uh, thanks for listening to this podcast. Thanks brother. Thanks for being on man, see ya.